Good day. Good day. We're all just so happy that the Thunderfoot straightened the Fukushima out with a piece of kelp. Oh, give us help. I'm waiting for my screen to come up, so I'm just mumbling. Let me see what I got here. I haven't got everybody's name. I was trying to add everybody's name to the pre-approved list. Anybody don't know what's going on? Give us a second. Let the stream warm up. Stacy Lane, Cucumber, Alex Smith. Hang on. Oh my goodness, I'm goofy. Okay, let me get rid of that page. Bring it over. Bring up the other one. What a long day. I had to go out and redo everything. Oh, sorry. I had to go out and redo the video three times. Kind of reminds me of being on uh, the ocean. I remember for a couple of years. And, uh, you know, 300 plus days a year on the ocean. And I never dinged a prop. And so I had to go into the rock piles, find a place to dive. And where it was safe for the tender to putter around in the boat. And so I would always go in and scope out everything and then keep him out in the deep waters. Um, I never did a prop sometimes for a couple of years. And the same with doing these videos. And I've become complacent where I'm... I've been doing it for so long and I guess I'm cocky or whatever. And today I had to do it three times. But we had a lot going on today. I had to go buy another tricycle today. Pretty excited. That'll be here next week. The old other tricycle kind of packed it in on me, so... It's a long story. Let me say hi. Alex Smith, Lunar, Tracy, Yurak, Char, uh, Morning Maya was here. Christopher Taylor, Marcus CC, Pam, Holly, Sylvia, Shawcross, DC Babus, Joyce Wickers, Pauline Hendry, Citizen Skywatch. Um, my computer, computer crashed right after I posted that last video this evening. How strange was that? And got the blue screen in death. I know you mentioned a comment, but I couldn't find it. Pauline, uh, Cats Alive, Mike Comer, Diver Dude, Ken, Zigfree, Sydney, Holy Herb, Zipfree, Wedge Mac, Bubba, Kurtzer, Kate, you all see, Domino, uh, Thomas, uh, Scrollburger, S C H O E N B E R G E R. He's got a good site there. 967 Pasta, Steve, Meyer, Annabeck, Dave, MacArthur, Nunia, Nuzai, Judy, Missing Sky, 101, Gary, Radioactive Space for You, Yaman. It's pretty good. Got a whole lot of people in in two minutes and 30. And because I was taking all your names to put you in a pre-approved list for comments. Oh, yeah, I found it in Google tonight. And so if I apparently if I get you into that list, but there's a little problem because I put all you in that list. And the list, I didn't notice it getting much bigger, and I was wondering what was going on. Turns out I got to pick out a picture, because lots of people got your names. Say, for instance, I got to figure out which one is you, and click that one, and that one gets it. And so I got to go do it again later. But I got all your names anyway saved into a, a batch to do that with. And hopefully that'll, right, it'll stop you guys from getting to, you know, spam on your comments. And then each night I'll go into the comment section, and anybody that's marked spam, I can get them into the list. And so in the next week or so, we should get rid of a, a bit of that nightmare wouldn't that be something and we're often uh, picking on thunderfoot tonight because he needs it what a uh, he's just he's supposed to be a physicist right a scientist and then uh, he talks about nuclear uh, in order to ridicule people marginalize people but he doesn't bring any kind of other narrative in there. He doesn't bother showing any of the dispersal models from around the world. He doesn't show any of the ocean dispersals. He doesn't show, uh, he doesn't even mention. He just talks about iodine-131 with an eight-day half-life. And yeah, he peters it out to 80 days because it is times 10. But he doesn't mention anything about the iodine-129, which got a 15 million year half-life. And every three iodine-131, there's an iodine-129. And he doesn't mention uranium or plutonium. He doesn't mention the cesium models that are everywhere. His own government produced many times now. And cesium-137 can't exist without strontium-90. And all the other family trees. See, none, none of these particles just came over here by themselves. It doesn't work that way. 
And so it's something else going on there. I'm going to get into that here in a little tiny bit. I just want to get to make sure everything is working. Hi, Stacy Anderson. I got to get your name in there. Uh, yeah, you heard my drive crash and is right, but I never crashed till the video went up. Right, you heard it when I was recording. <clears throat> I was using two computers. Uh, I'll get it. Everything's going to change in the next couple of weeks when I get that new studio. Big, powerful computers, blah, blah, blah. Not right away, but pretty quick. Hi, Sergeant. Moments, nothing more. DC Babu, I got your name in there. Sergeant York, I haven't. I'll get you in there. Christopher, nuts for art. I haven't got you in there yet. I'll get you in there, bud. Um, anybody else? Mickey. Hi, Mickey. And Four Winds. And see. Seedman, so there's a lot more people i got to get add onto the list to get pre-approved for the comments, so you guys don't, hopefully, I don't know, we'll find out though, that'll be a testing, so I got some of you in there, because I found your picture right away, but then now I was getting close, it takes so much, like doing that, that making that video today about Thunder Fox, or Thunder, uh, Lord Thunder and Thunderfoot, is how I always refer to him today, Lord Thunder and Thunderfoot, because I was at it last night, I wasn't supposed to do the video, I ended up going off because it's that rotten it's that deceitful it's that misleading my goodness i mean i cover so friggin much i'm gonna make a few mistakes i'm pretty sure of it and they're probably gonna be friggin embarrassing too but that's okay it's not gonna stop me because that's only gonna be one tenth of one percent of everything that i'm covering and no matter who was to cover as much as i cover you could expect that. And so when somebody just covers one little thing and still get it so friggin' wrong, right? Still get it so bloody wrong that is unimaginably, as far as you can get from talking about E equals MC squares, you can imaginably, uh, can, uh, it's, it's just impossible to, to see somebody with a degree. So maybe I should find uh, what university he went to and then we should try to get his um, a complaint about him because he's got credibility as a scientist and then he's using that to manipulate and deceive and he's making the community look like idiots he truly is you know how how can you say when there's 40 million becquels recorded off california in the seaweed just a little bit of seaweed well of course that had to have uranium there and of course 40 million becquels of the iodine 131 meant 10 million of those were iodine 129 right and so that's going to still there but you can't look for that you need a special geiger counter calibrated specifically to look for that type of isotope and you probably can't even do it then you probably got to take it and get an analyze but you can't trust none of the pricks out there excuse the language you can't trust none of the monsters out there and so we, we need a whole new revolution of getting to the facts and getting to the truths uh, that are uncompromisable. And I don't know where that's going to come from, but I'll be working hard to solve it. I won't get into that right now because I want to save it for the studio. But, I mean, that's the intentions, is we're at this all the way or we're not at it at all. And uh, I'm at it all the time anyway, so I might as well be at it. <laughs> that's the way I see it. And this is what's going to happen, is I'm going to have to challenge uh, endlessly Steve's got me working, Moyer's got me working on a video now about Ken Boosler, and I'll probably never figure out what the other guy is, because I left the other one plugged in so I can find the folder tonight, because that's how, what does the science, let me see, maybe that's it, oh, right, that'll be him, I'll get the other name now, I got it all here, uh, Jay Cullen from the University of Victoria. So I'm doing a video much like i done uh, about Thunderfoot today. And i done that. That's to him personally. And so there's a reason I do things the way I do it. I pick when I'm doing it specifically to somebody. It's completely different than when I'm doing it when I'm just sharing information. When I'm coming out and I'm, I'm trying to get at somebody, your first impression. And so I had to put the video up three times because I screwed it up. And it wasn't a line. Yeah, I know I'm going down that road. There was three melted reactors at Fukushima first. Everybody needs to know about that after nine minutes. Probably help a little bit if I started earlier. But there's three melted reactors at Fukushima. 100% destroyed. 
And he showed a picture of number three reactor in his video. That's the MOX fuel. That's two million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. Chernobyl was one third the size. It was graphite. I told you it wasn't as toxic as what was by any means in number three, obviously, which is two million times worse than any other reactor currently on the planet. And so that one melting down and hemorrhaging into the ocean is, a, is like 18 million reactors, Chernobyl's, because it was only 30% meltdown and they got the rods out. But it was still devastating, right? 3,600 square kilometers that are still not supposed to be lived in, that are not habitable, and where they tell you to don't stop if you do cut through it. But there are people that live there. There are people that hunt there. I'm not saying that because they're not trying to keep these people out. They're using them as experiments, obviously. And it's always like that. But back in the late 40s, they abandoned uh, 7,500 square, uh, square miles, not kilometers, but miles, uh, when they had a pollution there, and got uh, 7,500 communities, 9,000 square miles, I'll get it right at some point. You know what I mean? It's because there's so much going on. And uh, a decade later, they abandoned another 1,000 square miles because they had dumped everything into a pond that had no running water out of it, allegedly. And, but that was a dry summer back in the 50s. It was so dry, the pond dried out, and then all that... Uh, 238, uranium-238, all the plutonium, americium, uh, strontium, cesiums, and everything contaminated another 1,000 miles. And, of course, that keeps spreading out, and all the insects and all the birds, and you're getting all the mutations. That gets into the water table for over now 10,000 square miles. Miles. And that's probably full of coal. That's enough coal there probably to burn for the entire planet. Now you can never get at I mean, coal plants, when they go bad, they don't contaminate 10,000 square miles till the end of time. And that's because of uranium-234 and 235. Now, once you take these rods and this fuel and you put it through the chain reaction, it becomes millions of times more toxic. And so the particles that are coming over here are much hotter than the ones they try to claim, right? You know how they always try to equate everything with a banana, now a banana, when you because it has na like everything else has natural radiation. When you put radiation in your body, you naturally off-gas that same amount of radiation. It's like an equilibrium. It's like, um, and you do this. You know, I covered that a bit last night, but I'll bring up that folder if I can find it super fast. And I guess not. Should say Ken. Hi Ken, where are you to, buddy? There he is. And what you got to remember. Uh, Boing Boing actually put out an article about bananas but fo uh, let me bring that one up for a quick second that was 2010 just before the accident bananas are radioactive but they aren't a good way to explain radiation exposure right and so if you had a piece of banana a piece of uranium rods the rods at Fukushima were 12 feet and there's uh, hundreds of thousands of them that were aerosoled and went up into the jet streams and the troposphere and the, ionos or the uh, atmosphere and were carried over across the ocean in just a couple of days because of the jet streams, the speed they travel. And I wanted to explain to you, though, about the banana because there was another really important, and I got it in this folder, I'm hoping, homeostats. S-T-A-S-I-S. -S. And it's the property of a system in which variables are regulated so that the internal conditions remain stable and rel relatively constant. Uh, so the regulation of temperatures in your home, say, you know, with a thermostat, your body works like that, or like cruise control on a car, or uh, autopilot, um... You know, wherever there's there's like a system set up to keep you regulate something regulated, your body does that. It off gases that potassium because that's insignificant. It doesn't belong in the equation. You won't find it in, you know, uh, potassium forty is nowhere in e equals mc square. It's got nothing to do with it. But it's used in order to marginalize everybody and to misrepresent it and to keep people off balance because there's naturally eight, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand. Beckwell's of potassium 40. 
But if you had seven or eight, nine thousand becquels of uh, strontium or uranium, you'd be in a hell of a lot of trouble. You got cancer. You can't escape that. Right? You're contaminated. You have to put your body on a nuclear waste site. It's that big of a difference. See? And but they use these numbers in order to try to fool people, trick people, keep people off balance. And they're very effective if you don't understand what they're actually talking about. And I'm, I've got some really great examples of that coming out hopefully tomorrow in that other video about uh, Woods Hole, Ken Busler, and Jay Cullen from University of Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. And I'm going to drop them on their heads a few times. And so Thunderfoot has already done that with a video about bananas where he equates bananas as the equivalent of... So if I had a piece of rod... Uh, that was the size of a banana. I couldn't finish the sentence. And that if I passed it to somebody, and they passed it to somebody, and that kept doing that, you'd kill everybody on the planet with that, that rod, the size of a banana. But we can pass a banana. Like a banana got a half-life of eight days, right? But it's, it can't hurt you. You can fill the, this house up with bananas, and it can't possibly hurt me. Now, depending on how long they were in the house and how many flies would gather up because you left all this fruit in here, yeah, that could be an issue, but it still wouldn't give me cancer unless you, I guess, swallowed all those flies. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and it's the same thing with the uh, ocean. I can take a bath in the ocean all day, every day. That's got nothing to do with uranium-234, 235, uranium-238, which is left over from the production. And so that means it's a couple of million times more different. The gamma, the betas, the alphas, the x-rays, the neutrons are completely different by millions. They're much more toxicity. And that's why they're, put, they're supposed to be in a sarcophagus for millions of years. Right? But there's, the idea of a sarcophagus is to dump it into the ocean and claim, oh, it's going to dilute. It's the perfect thing. Ocean dilutes it. Well, it don't. It never did. It never could. You can't change it. It's energy. They put it in because that's why they're trying to keep the rays down so people don't get cancer at the nuclear power plants and to cool it down for a long time. And so that contains the neutrons. But they're always, they always got to fill up those ponds with water. They're always boiling off. Where do you think all that shit goes? It releases it into the environment, right? And all 440 plants, nuclear power plants on the planet hemorrhage into the ocean. They all got pipes running out into the ocean, into the streams, into the ponds, into the lakes wherever they're situated. Because if they release it into the community, then you might have eight or ten dead people on the side of the road. That's not going to be very pretty, right? Might be even be uh, whitewash inquiries and embarrassing. But it's all private investors. I better bring up the comments section because people could be yelling at me, Dana, you're freaking off here. It still looks safe for me to keep talking. Because uh, we've had issues with the stream, that's for sure. It's a very difficult thing to keep maintained. And so then we have Thunderfoot. And he's what I consider an enigma, where he's extraordinarily talented, un unimaginably educated, extremely articulate, and then he makes a video about radiation, and he supplies zero, zero, so it was about coming out and putting them down, someone down, uh, the people. And you'll try that with me, no doubt, in a roundabout way. He probably won't attack me directly. I don't think he's capable. And I think that, you know, there could I could be wrong, and he could be just naive. He really could have that kind of an ego that he's so friggin' naive that he really didn't get it. But now he'd get it if he ever catches this video or my other one. He actually might have an idea what this stuff is all about. It'd be nice to win someone like that uh, over, but I think these people are already sold their souls to the dark side. And if you go over to his site, which we're going to do right now, because, hey, why not? He's hooked up with TNT a few months ago, T uh, the Young Turks. Now, you know, I've given them the gears a few times. Now, if you go over to the Young Turk and type in sex or type in preschooler, or type in uh, teacher and student sex or something like that, you'll you'll have a lot of work ahead of you to go through it because that's how they drag everybody in. And then they have a, right alongside it will be two or three political videos, ideology of the Young Turks, and that's what they live on. Now, Thunderfoot is an interesting one. 
because uh, I'm going to bring up his uploads. He loves picking on the Muslims. So because 5% of the Muslims are radicalized, he wants to demonize the other 95% rootlessly, endlessly. Anybody know where that's coming from? <laughs> this is, uh, I didn't mean to play this, so I'll get rid of it. Now, see, that shouldn't be played. That happened to me the other night where I got no other window open, only the one window. And then how does that play in the background? I don't know. So, Thunderfoot, um, he skips the part about just 5 million orphans in Afghanistan. He skips the part about the Americans fired into every building in that country and in Iraq. He doesn't put that into the equation of why these people are upset with the Americans. He doesn't bother mention the 22 veterans that commit suicide every day. But he'll talk about the one that got blown up in Iraq, right? And he doesn't mention the 29,000 reported rapes every year by the Pentagon, which is only about 28% of the rapes that were actually reported. But at that numbers, you got 80,000 dead versus 6,000 maybe in combat. You got uh, 290,000 rapes. If they're raping their own that much, how much are you raping in the countries they're occupying? And if a foreign occupation came into his country and raped his family, his daughter, his mother, his wife, would he take up arms against him, I wonder? And so he goes under this logic that he's superior because there's a small percentage of people that are bad, so it's okay to demonize the entire population and marginalize them in order to get at that 5%. Because that's the way he goes about it. He never gives him credit. And, I, you know, that is a repressive regime. I'm not condoning anything. I'm just saying you won't hear him mention 2.25 million rounds a month of depleted uranium that came from McAllister's bomb manufacturing facility in McAllister, Oklahoma. And that that's every one of them are dirty bombs. And that because 80% of the children born in Fallujah got no eyes or no nose or no mouth, I mean, that, that should frustrate... Uh, the entire population have them hate Americans, shouldn't it? Or the British? Would you expect? If you've done it to me, we would hate you. Come over and fire a bullet in everybody's house in Canada. No matter what country you're from, we'll fucking hate you. That's a fact. Um, but then he's over, like, hanging out with the young Turks, who's always promoting children to go join the military. Right? And so two of them fit together perfectly. And then he he's willing to put out videos with no factual information, but just use a spin in order to demonize people. And somehow that's okay. Somehow that's uh, sensible. I mean, we definitely got to... Hi, Thomas. We definitely got to, you know, send letters to his university and ask him why is he representing himself as a physicist, as a scientist... And about nuclear physics, uh, nuclear contamination, and not actually use anything pertinent, is something we're going to have to do with a lot of people, not just him. Um, because this this is ludicrous, uh, and it it really actually doesn't matter because the universities are lobbyists by definition. That's what they do. They do studies for a handful of corporations. Their lobbyists will come and tell them what to do, and they'll locate money to them. And I'm going to cover more about that tomorrow night with Ken Buesler and Jay Cullen uh, because they're directly connected to lobbyist money in their research and their degrees. And I don't know much about... Um, I don't know much about people that live in this paradigm and where they think it's acceptable to come out when they should just keep their mouth shut and do what they're best at, putting out junk. But to come out and stab people, hi Gary, you know, to come out and do what he's doing and teach all of his followers not to think about or consider or even suspect, uh, you know, maybe they got vulnerable children, maybe they got uh, vulnerable grandparents, uh, because cesium goes right to the heart. 
and that children are closer to the ground so they ingest it more and some areas got more and so everybody needs to take a precaution and look for high gamma or high betas in their areas because there was so much came over for so long it was sustained and still coming out of there they can't contain that nobody could ever get in reactor one two and three uh, because uh, when they had those detonations the ponds on the roof of them, on a couple of them, like, like the one I got for the cover shot, number three reactor, number three reactor um, spread uh, so much contaminant around the site. And then they came with bulldozers and just buried it. And so all of that needs to be cleaned up because the site, every time it rains or every time it snows, it also washes new isotopes from that mess out there. But just uh, unit number two. Hi, Thomas. Ed. Ryan, yeah, zero, zero mean no brains. Ryan Reality. Is that right, Ryan? Good stuff. Uh, hi, Stephen B. Stacy. Anderson, hi. I always like to say hi, folks. Anybody's not familiar with what I'm doing here. We're doing a live stream. If the comments are to the left, we're live streaming. If the comments below, the video has re-rendered itself up. And... We do this every night. I usually post a preamble, which has a countdown timer on it around 5 p.m. Pacific Canada time, British Columbia. And it'll have a countdown timer for around two hours. When the, it reaches zero, I'm pretty good. Everybody will, uh, you know, knows that about me. I'm actually really good. Thanks, Ryan. And that I will show up on time. I'm very, if I'm late, it's only by moments. I don't know. Let me see what I got going on here, just in case. Could be somebody's kitty cat is missing. I need help. Go look for her. Right? Uh, I don't know, Jay. I got no idea. I'll check it out after. Yeah. Not been around for a long time. He's okay. Don't hack his computer. <laughs> <laughs> Hi Stormy Cloud. Hi Albert. <laughs> no, I was just kidding. Nobody knows. If you if you haven't been following me for a long time, you probably don't know what I was doing that time. Pam, the real night writer. Yeah, some of the trolls are threatening, for sure. Uh, Char, Pam, Am Thirst, hit the like button. Let it go. Yeah, come on, come on, come on. Give us some some thumbs up. Not just kidding. You guys are way too kind. Unbelievably good to me. Uh, I'm going to be here anyway, but it's so much fun to know that there's a lot of people out there paying attention. And last night I finally got into my, uh, figured out how to get into the emails. <laughs> so a lot of you got emails last night because I answered everybody that was there. And, uh, and uh, you know, now I'll check it at least once a day. Once again, we're getting ready... We're getting ready to this new way of thinking that we have to advance society with some logic behind it. We got to get some pro, uh, some some nutrition back into the food. But I mean, everybody got to understand what's going on. So every night I'm here trying to give everybody a basics of what's going on, having a little bit of fun. But you know, I'm trying to always remember to tell everybody all the other stuff that's going on. And the DCA, there's a link below about that. How that reduces all tumors by 70% in the first three weeks. That's survival, right? And it's only pennies compared to 150000 a year for the conventional, what they call treatment. But they're treating you with, uh, and, a, and, a, and once again, let me go back to the, the GMO for one second. There's no nutrients, right? They got rid of all the potassium, magnesium, all the calcium, all the carbon, all the iron, all the properties, all the minerals, nutrients, and you engineer it in formaldehyde and glossophates. And so you can't uptake nutrients. And so you gotta get that out of your system, out of your closets, out of your cupboards. You have to do it. You have to find a way to do it and start over with and get be able to get these nutrients into your body. And so the DCA below is a natural mineral, no pharmaceutical it's no prescription, there's no uh, patent on it. Uh, and then there's dandelion root tea. And dandelion root tea you can eat any part of a dandelion any time of the year, even when it's flowering. You can cut you know, the, the, the flowers off it and eat the rest of it. It's all mineral and all, pro, all um, nutrients. 
Every it's, it's a complete meal in one plant. Unbelievable, I know. And it's the best thing you could ever do to your body because you get all these trace nutrients and GMO is engineering it out of you. The dirtiest trick possible. And so everything in your corner shop is GMO. Everything at your uh, fast food joints is GMO. Everything in your supermarket is suspect and about 85 of it now is confirmed to be GMO. Everything craft is GMO. And you can't uptake nutrients. All that, uh, a friend of mine went to the, uh, three big supermarkets, big, the big the big ones, you know, we got 25,000 people here. And he was only able to find one ice cream that wasn't GMO. Unbelievable. He's really good. And uh, turmeric has 600 peer review academic studies uh, on different uh, benefits. And you can even put it on cuts. It's got unbelievable properties. It's one of the most... Uh, magical things on this planet bar everything and is recognized by 600 studies that have been peer-reviewed about different properties and how how good it is for you and there's never been a study about it being bad for you it's completely innocuous and then we have structured water and structured water if you know this is different than the water you get out of your tap this is different than bottled water this is water that ran down the mountain or ran through the mountain, came out the, the springs. And that's a chorus that was made over millenniums. And water changes its property. And I can go for a long time about that, but I'm not going to. But I want you to understand you need to look at that and you need to get your hands on that stuff. That works a lot like DCA in every way. But DCA is a really good mineral, particularly when it comes to cancer, right? But it's still a good mineral even if you haven't got cancer. It's a wonderful mineral that on plate your blood and um, what else we got here you know Iraq fired 5.5 million bullets a month every month look it up on the government's website you'll see it 5.5 million rounds a month Iraq you'll find the government websites go click on it and read and they're talking about how they got to start uh, producing uh, another Two billion rounds a month a year, and so they're going to start up a contractor to get another two billion rounds produced every year. Well, there's only eleven thousand uh, Taliban, and you got five million orphans and twenty nine thousand rapes a year. You got a couple of million in refugee camps, a couple of million missing, a couple of million widows. That uh, Thunderfoot demonizes all the time and says they're the devil and they just want to kill us, but that's all we've done to them. We've never done nothing but. We meddle in everything about them. Thunderfoot is like, we got to stop stop Iran. Well, Iran's got 49 American bases around it with lasers and directed energy weapons and satellites aimed down at it. They got um, 49 bases, fully stocked, nuclear weapons, warships, fighter jets. They got electronic warfare going on all the time, sabotage, and they got embargoes and everything else. And these people are not supposed to be upset. And Thunderfoot can't work out why these people are upset, right? And that's why he done a video about the nuclear waste, because he really doesn't care about life. He just wants to, everybody to think that he's really cool and really trendy and really smart. And he's actually murdering his fans, uh, his poorly indoctrinated, the gullible fans. And then he introduces them to people like the Young Turks as if they're actually something that they should pay attention to, as if they're something that got some kind of credibility or something. As if there's somebody who actually knows, you know, I can go way down that road. Their site is full of sex and teachers and students, right? That's the lowest form of life. That's uh, smut. When you've got to do stuff like that, then that's utterly deceitful. And so what he got is he got a bunch of haters, military and that, that uh, kept pumping them out there. And that makes him feel powerful. But his really power is taking what he got and converting it over to doing the right thing for a change. And uh, what a shock, eh? See, I should have done that. I should have come out like a dummy, right? And sucked everybody in and then come out. Actually, I'm pretty cool. I'm pretty, uh, you know, I read a few things. I got an opinion of my own, you don't know. No. Uh, Hanford's got 450 billion gallons dumped right into the soil right out of the drums into the soil not in drums and buried but dumped of yellow cake neptunium and americium strontium 
And this was uranium-238 left over from the production of a massive amount of plutonium for bombs. And the plutonium is used because you can, for the Big Bang, right? Because you can compact it or compress it with whatever it is they do. And it gives it a bigger bang. They can do it the other way because they used to do it the other way. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. No one knows what Pakistan and India is doing with all their nuclear stuff, right? But they're pretty good. They they think probably figured out how to build a sarcophagus, right? And there's 40 ships disappeared in Italy. And apparently they went to Somalia and, and sunk them off the coastline. So people wonder why Somalia fishermen turned to piracy. Because you can't even eat the fish. And it was done on purpose to destroy them. Because we deal in a hateful world. In an utterly... Uh, 1957 was the Maya, the cursed or disaster. And, uh, that's where they dumped all the uranium-238 in Russia into the river. I was talking about earlier and had to evacuate 9,000 miles permanently. See, they had morals. They had ethics. They done the right thing, right? Uh, da, 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 da. Well, we don't know what Israel got done with all their... <laughs> Israel got a couple of hundred nuclear weapons. Right? They got Gaza there where they test out all their new weapons. They're the fourth biggest weapons producer on the planet. But according to... Um, According to uh, Gordon Lightfoot, I shouldn't call him that because that's somebody who's actually famous. According to uh, Clubfoot, I'll call him from now on. According to Clubfoot, I like that one. Uh, the five million refugees that are living in Syria and Damascus and Egypt and everywhere else, they haven't got no water, they got no land to share. That's causing all kinds of division, that's kind of causing all kinds of grief, all kinds of anger. So that Israel could have the land for seven million crazies. Right, it, when Israel for quite a long time was given anybody who came to their country fifty thousand bucks just to come there and be an Israeli citizen, you didn't have to stay there just to be an Israeli citizen, fifty thousand. But if you wanted to stay, they give you a free house in the occupied, stolen land of the Palestinians. Right, Israel was created around sixty-one years ago. <coughs> And so they fired all kinds, because they're the fourth biggest weapons producer on the planet. All their new weapons, they tested it out on Gaza. Gaza's 1.6 million people in 31 miles by 7 mile pit of hell. It's one of the most toxic places on the planet. And Israel fired depleted uranium 155 millimeter uh, from the Abram tanks, 10 pounds of solid uranium 238, it's not tipped, it's not coated into family cars and family homes and hospitals and schools and distribution centers and food banks and bus shelters and playgrounds and so everybody in Gaza had to go shift through all that because of the air, land, sea embargoes and so they were shifting through all this uranium-238 because that's what these shells are made out of and because they went through the nuclear chain reaction already to be refined they're a couple of million times different they're gammas, betas, alphas the x-rays, because they're actually bullets landing, chunks landing, you're talking x-rays and gammas. And then uh, they steal all the water, but they created 5 million refugees that are still living in refugee camps 60 years later. They attacked uh, the USS Liberty for an hour, trying to sink it, and they are going to blame that on Egypt. At the same time, there was a boat that left the Sixth Fleet, uh, two planes left the Sixth Fleet that were armed with nuclear weapons. They were going to go up and glass the Sinai Peninsula where the day before Israel had created, uh, dug, uh, captured 1,100 Egyptian soldiers, made them dig their holes, graves, and then got down and, and shot them and made the next bunch of soldiers bury them and got down, shot them and made killed 1,100 Egyptian soldiers. And then the next morning, they attacked the USS Liberty. And there were two planes anyway that went off. And there, it, the ship didn't sink, so they had to recall the birds because they were going to go over and nuke and blame it on... Uh, they were going to blame the sinking of the USS Liberty. And that was Israel done it. That was a false flag they were running up on. And McNamara, who was the president at the time, they got the, the audio of them, right, declassified. He didn't give a shit. If she went to the, the bottom, the USS Liberty, he wasn't going to embarrass his allies. And so they attacked the Americans and uh, 
blah, blah, blah. But I mean, that's, they got so much uranium. What are they doing with that uranium? Right? We know they used it. There's around 33,000 Israeli children that were actually poisoned by Israel. They were trying to figure out how deadly it was. And, and Joe's stories are out there, folks. This is real stuff. There's UK Sellafield. Eight million liters a day coming out of that ocean. Eight friggin' million liters a day. Every day. Right? They're not running over the, the melted cores that we know about, but th this is highly radioactive water. And so, when you're talking about all this radiation going into the ocean, you've got to think about the Philippines and Tonga. The Philippines were hit by 195 mile an hour sustained winds that was 100 miles wide. It was an F4 tornado. This is not global warming that's going on, folks. This is radiation. Because radiation is putting out all these beckles, these disintegrations per second, every second. And whenever you hear these, like, iodine or whatever, think about iodine-129 with a 15 million year half-life. And when you hear uranium's 4.5 billion, before it starts to lose any, even a little tiny bit of energy. Right? So when they're released into the environment, they were never supposed to be released into the environment. But uh, the, the fuel pools, they're open. So they, they heat and evaporate all of that off. They're all at it. And all nuclear power plants are private investors. Insurance companies won't touch them. Well, it seems like going down that road. Let me keep going. They had the nuclear testing worldwide. is the least of it. Uh, 90,000 ships on the ocean. 16 ships produce more pollution than all the cars on the planet. 16 of these big bunker burning fuel ships. The bunker that fuel that's burning is supposed to be in a... a, to, not, a toxic waste site at 1800 bucks a ton and instead they got this pack with the ocean and these big bunkers these big ships the container ships with 500 containers on it they burn that stuff it's very inefficient and so I got studies on the particles how they go up into the environment into the troposphere and the atmosphere and hang up there for up to 10 years and rain out and there's 90,000 of those ships on the ocean. That's 42 trillion people on the on this planet every day worth of automobiles. 42 trillion, not billion, but trillion. Because there's 90,000 of these ships. One of them produces more pollution than all the cars in Canada, New Zealand, and Australia combined. Just one. So, But they'd rather demonize you for your tin cans, your pop bottles, and your little beater, right? It's okay to use uh, be fuel efficient because they drove the prices through the ceiling, and I mean, there's, like, we got, if we took, there's three peer review academic studies a minute that are published, not counting what's not published, 1,000 pages, 1,000 man hours. And there's 4,800 a day, there's 1,440 minutes a day, and there's three a minute, but there's 4,800 a day peer review academic studies that are published, and you're ready to go again. Imagine if we took all of them and said, solve the equation of the electric car. No, can't do that. Go over to Elsevier. Publishing houses, there's 39 peer review studies on Fukushima, and you got to pay 60 bucks for the cheapest one. But you paid for it. You paid for the university, the heat, the light, the powers, the professors, their tenor, the building, all the equipment in it. You packed the lunches for the children to go to school. You paid their fear or their tuitions. And you can't get access to that stuff unless you pay a, you know, what, do the math. Like most of these peer review studies are not dirt cheap. Off isotopes in the ocean water? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, Ben. Hi, Sydney. Lowest body temperature for me was 94.1. Sylvia, what does candle not worth the flame mean? I don't know. I like it. It's got a certain ring to it. How's my audio coming? Folks, okay? How long have I been screaming? I'm usually pretty good. 43 minutes! <laughs> oh, and... Um, so each night I do these videos and I go in and click and so I average around 600 people on a stream but you only see like 145 but it shows around 600 people showed up at the stream at one point at some point and so if you watch the whole stream you get an average maybe I don't know how that works um, 
So I find that interesting anyway, but I've been noticing that for a long time. We do average, almost every show, 600 people visit the show, but it only shows like 100 and blah, 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 which is fantastic, don't get me wrong, because this was meant to be easier for me to sit here in front of the camera, shoot it up, and just hit a button, and then it stops. But it would be a lot more... Um, it turns out to be a lot of, you know, because I'm at it all the time, so I'm just trying to keep up with everything. And see, i got another page I haven't even got to yet. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. I, got, I got to a lot of it, though. There's an epidemic of birth defects wherever the Americans go from depleted uranium rounds, in case you're all wondering. There was a Japanese physicist at a Hamburg conference and um, depleted uranium dull ram, depleted uranium low-level radioactive material. It used to be called, but they got rid of those last part of that acronym. They called it DU. And there's nothing depleted about it, of course, because it'll kill you so quick. That's why it's supposed to be in a sarcophagus till the end of time. And the, the melted reactors have rods all over the outside of them. Every time there's an earthquake, there's a release. Rods fall down and becomes aerosols, and they have a thousand to five thousand earthquakes along that belt every year. And so there's always aerosols coming out of it. But you do have the melted cores that are unhinged. Three of them down there somewhere, headed somewhere, probably to Argentina, and they're bellowing up nine thousand degree Fahrenheit temperatures. And so that aerosols, so a, a single gram of CC-137 produces more radioactive atoms than all the grains of sands and all the beaches on the planet. And because of the salt water and everything else, these radioactive particles, these atoms, which a lot of people think are insignificant, if you ingest one of them, they're, they're what you call the hot particles because of the way they're, they're formed at such high temperatures and with such toxic material, the NOx plutonium, NOx fuel uh, mixture, and then that hideous thing that they done where they sprayed salt water on it. There is there was no studies on that, but there is one down below about it. And there's another one out there somewhere. I'm sure. I I know I'm missing one anyway out of my collection. And then I'll get eventually. And the important thing about it is the suggestion that they don't salute with water and that they reliberate so rain could re-liberate them, uh, convection could liberate them. The ocean, because it has so much hemorrhaging into it, the clouds are picking it up and carrying it ahead, right? And I mean, well, California with 40 million becquels of uh, iodine-131, 10 million becquels of that is iodine-129. Who cares about the 131? It's just emblematic that it came from a chain reaction, right? From a fission. Uh, because... They expect that because it's right under the jet stream, and it only takes a couple of days to get there. And if you look, they should find it. And they're only looking, you know, your Geiger counter is only going to find low particles. It can't find the high particles. It can pick up some good counts and give you an indication, but it's not a $10,000, $50,000 military grade Geiger counters that are calibrated for certain isotopes. And, like, this is all stuff that's underfoot won't face up to, won't admit to, can't accept, doesn't want to know about, and, uh, you know, this will shock him. He can't, like, he, he can make fun of it, but it'll sink into his head at some point of how so far wrong, so how misguided, and how actually hideous the things he's doing truly are, will at some point in his life have to sink in, because you can't avoid the information and the implications of your actions and your words forever. You just can't. And anybody that had time to digest uh, even a bit of this kind of stuff understands there's a huge implication for misleading the people that are just, that are looking to you for the, the facts and the realities. And my biggest problem, my biggest fear, of course, is because I cover so much and I could easily make mistakes and uh, that worries me a lot. And so I'm pretty good. But I don't think anybody can cover as much as I do and not make a few mistakes, whether they're simple, innocuous, or dangerous. I don't know how they would be dangerous, I guess, but or, or just foolish or whatever, because it's just so much. 
There's so many variables. There's so many, like I say, they talk about potassium-40. We talk about all the other 5,000 isotopes. It's like they can't wrap their mind around it, or the idea is to keep that paradigm alive at all costs. I mean, they're in desperate mode. They're in desperate mode now because they're coming out nonstop for the last two weeks. Everybody recognizes that. We've seen the headlines of people that have been paying attention and think that's pretty odd. We've seen all kinds of attempts at retractions, like from Suzuki and stuff like that. And But he was... That was at the same time as they were putting the fable out about building four, see? So that played right in to that paradigm that they were building and that we eviscerated. And we, you know, we really stuck it to these people that you can't have a perfect symmetrical interior inside of a reactor building like number four that detonated and where the detonations were felt 25 kilometers away by AP reporters and that you know, every panel and every wall was blown out of that building that used to be a 10-story building, right? And then you got Max Fuel right alongside of it. It's two million times more deadly. Than it. But, but then you had all the media reporters who, went, who claimed to go inside a building four. You can't get inside of that. That's the most ludicrous thing you could ever imagine. The building got peppered um, with projectiles from the detonations all around it, for starters, and it detonated. Its fuel pool caught twice, caught fire twice, so all the zirconium burnt, cladding burnt off those fuel rods. There's 122,000 fuel rods in each pond. And the fuel rods are 12 feet long. They're in the bundles of 80, there's 1,535 bundles. Right? And he wants to talk about bananas. But a piece of any of those fuel rods the size of a banana has the capacity to kill all the mammals on the planet after it kills all the humans. If you were to engineer it to go out there and come in contact with everybody because of the, the neutrons and the x-rays from being so close proximity to that particular coin. But when it's atomized and becomes hot buckyballs and hot radioactive particles, they're different. They're different. Okay? No... It's like saying that the phytoplankton, like a glass of water has 75 to 100 million phytoplankton uh, creatures in the ocean that actually produce oxygen. But, you know, ignore that there has to be something else in the water besides that 75 to 100 million phytoplankton. There's uh, 500 times other creatures in there also, right? But some people can't wrap their mind around that. There's no other time about that, but there's not. Because you... Um, that's the whole point, is the sea is a, a soup of life itself. It's all interconnected with life in every aspect and every form of it. And we're actually, you know, we're attacking water on this planet. And now we want to do all this fracking. And that's going to knock down what water they can't get at. That's going to get at the water that's buried away. And so this is an orchestrated effort to attack water because that nothing else makes sense, right? Instead of taking all the universities and institutions to put them to work to solve our energy crisis, like they could have many times, but they lock it all up at Elsewhere Springer and Wiley's Ivory Towers, they want to go out and finish off what little precious resources we got left on the planet by contaminating it. And we pay the bill. I mean, fuck that, right? I'm getting sick of this. I'm not taking it no more. I'm not going to sit here and put up with it anymore. I'm not going to fucking beg anybody. Okay, I'll push back on my own. That's the best I could do. But at least I'm going to do that much. Imagine if a million people like us all rose up yesterday and yelled at, at the toothless fucker. He wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't be able to sleep last night. He wouldn't be able to post another video for a long time. If a million people come out and said, That's outrageous. And stomped him into the ground. That'd be the end of them. You do that with Bill O'Reilly. You can do that with anybody on this planet. You have that friggin' power. You have that capacity. And at some point, you're going to use it, right? Shake your head like that. Because that's what I'm pushing for. I want you to be articulate. I want you to be witty and approachable. And be able to look your family members, your friends and concerned uh, fellows out there and girls and kids and tell them the truth. 
that you gotta avoid GMO, that you gotta learn to eat healthy, that you gotta, you can't avoid the radiation, but there are many ways you can mitigate it and get out of the way. You can look at the studies yourself and figure out where the big deposits were, like California, which we know is just a weather spot for the jet streams and the ocean currents. And we know that the models all show large deposits and 40 million becquels in seaweed is a friggin' large deposit, particularly when 10 million of that is iodine-129 and will never go away. In any generation you could ever spawn, we'll never live to see the day when that went away because it breaks down for 150 million years times 10, right? 15 million times 10, see? And for all the other people out there that are just searching for the truth and trying to wrap their mind around it and are worried and frightened, right? You found the right spot. You'll get yourself educated. You'll understand all the basics. There's links below to help you through that. There's other narratives down there. So you don't have to just listen to my narrative. And I recommend that highly. That way you can digest things better. Always go listen to the other side. Always go listen. If you don't like it and you walk away, come back to that video that you didn't like and watch it at some point later. And you'll feel better for doing that because you'll understand that a little bit more about these triggers that are meant to um, stop you. And because once you watch the video, now you understood why. They did, why you didn't like it was because it was meant to trick you, manipulate you, and fool you, and deceive you. And they do it in such a way that it makes you feel guilty or makes you feel that you can't understand it or you can't digest it. And that's not true, right? Everybody has that ca that capacity, I can guarantee you. When given an opportunity, you'll find out uh, that the world, you know, has an opportunity right now. And we need to take it. And we're going to. We're not asking anybody we're taking it because we got no options. They screwed up. We gave them every opportunity. We gave them all the money they ever wanted. We'd done everything we could for them. They destroyed it. They destroyed the entire system. And then they buried the information. I mean, a hundred times the IA died 131 in Canada. And they never told us. They hid it. There's a study below. I bet I had a Canadian government out there and found just big death plumes coming in here and never told nobody. Let the kids walk to school. Let their families walk to school. Let their families go and get their mail and that kind of stuff. For what? For a paycheck for another couple of years? Until a big storm like the Philippines comes in here and tears up this coastline? You don't think it's not going to happen. As the, the, the strength of it increases as it comes along the coastline, you too can get a storm just like the Philippines or Tonga. And I hope you don't. I really do, but I'm worried you will. And I know you will. They can't contain it. Or it wouldn't have happened to the Philippines and it wouldn't have happened to Tonga. That's why they had to, to bury it in the media. But like I got the video below about that one and the tango will have to wait for another day because I'm trying to finish off another one about two major milk pieces that Steve sent me and the Myers and I got to get at. They they got to get taken down a notch. But because Thunderfoot, the Lord Thunder and Thunderfoot got my attention and that really hurts to see people with a lot of subscribers come out and poison them, destroy them, manipulate them, lie to them, fool them deceive him and then try to turn them into the hateful creature that he is and, and then use them as tools and instruments to come out and try to deny people the ability to rationalize. I had to come out tonight and, and stomp a little bit more. But you know, I kind of ran out of uh, the anger anyway after redoing that video three times a day. <laughs> but I didn't want to have it out there unless it was really cool, at least decent the way I intended it. I had changed the name on one of the foils and I forgot to turn the audio on at the very end of it so we couldn't get that little punchline because that was, I thought, so funny. Uh, blah, blah. Hi, Red Chick. How are you doing, sweetie? I'll get you in on that list too so that you can comment as much as you want. And I always check everybody's. And uh, Red Chick, anybody don't know, is Christina Consolo. You'll find her links below. She runs Nuke Radio. She's got her own site now um, that I'm supposed to have. Uh, oops, the link below for that one, too. Thanks for reminding me. And I guess that's about it for me tonight, folks. I'll say hi. 
I said hi to everybody at night at the beginning. I'll say hi to a few that I might have missed. And how did we go? 59 minutes. The old clock is working pretty good for Dana tonight. Well, I'll tell you what. There's something else, Dana. And Beck says she's a tough bitch. You go, Annie. And Pasha, Ash, hi, Ash. Domino's Fallen, Sylvia Shawcross, Sergeant, Huma, Mike, Standing Foot, Rad Chick again. Uh, Rad Chick, you're such a sweetie. When I get some, I'm getting a new studio, and we're going to be having a TriCast room, so I'll be able to import people in, and I'll be doing lots of interview uh, after that. So this next couple of weeks, I'll be getting lots of these kind of streams in, but after that, it'll be more about interviews, more about covering subjects in detail with all the graphs and everything else. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. And we got uh, Moments Not Anymore, Elizabeth. I'll have to come in again and read everybody's comments. Lori Front. Remain. 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 I know. I, you're out there working hard too. All right. Check's getting herself some DCA bubblegum. She is out. That's pretty cool. Your Xmas press from Miss Milky. Woo! That's pretty sweet. It's a natural mineral. It's really good for you, right? It's so good for your blood. And it's so good for any bad cells in your body. It just, it just rejuvenates. It's one of the real magical things out there. And there's no patent on it. See, and they don't... Uh, just, like you say, the studies are numerous now. Diver Dude, we'll say goodbye to everybody. Hi, Zoe. And Stacy Anderson... Kathy, thank you, Kathy. I'll get your name in after two so that everybody can comment. Yeah, Climate Viewer News, Rad Chick's new site, uh, Climate Viewer News, and that's her site, folks. So she got 100% control, and she's been at it a long time. Moments not anymore, you bet, folks. Cats Alive, Kathy Reed, Hespa, I haven't got you, but thank you. And I'm not going to get to everybody tonight because I've been going for an hour. Hi, Bob. Stacy Colfit, Sergeant Mike, Pam, once again. It was a pretty good stream, I thought. I never stomped on as much as I was going to. I was going to go down through all of uh, Thunderfoot's videos, but I just, like, I really don't care. But that's just the way the video worked out tonight, that I put his name there. I've done a little bit of stomping, a little bit of screaming, a little bit of crying, a little bit of whining, and uh, covered a whole bunch of good stuff. And just really enjoyed it. I actually feel better tonight, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, Christopher, Albert. The Four Winds, Holly Herb, uh, Kathleen, Huma, and everybody else will get you folks. Again, tomorrow night at the same time, 5 Pacific, I'll post a preamble at 7 o'clock around the same time as the night, every night, pretty well, you'll find the live stream. So, And you can just go to my front page, click on uh, videos and uploads, and you'll see events, click on that, and then it'll be the first video if I got one scheduled. Great, makes sense. It was a good stream, hour and two minutes. Have a nice night, folks, and we'll see you tomorrow.